hi everybody welcome back i hope you're all doing well so today's video is going to be a bit different so let's get into it really nikki huh? you serious so you you break it up with me for real <laughs> well are you you gonna you gonna break up with me or are you gonna think about it or what are you serious i'm gonna think about it but i am upset right now <sighs> upset enough to just like throw our whole relationship away that, that quick you shouldn't have did what i told you not to do Man, I ain't know you gonna trip like that. Well, now you know. So you gonna lie to me? What you gonna do? You, you ain't gonna leave me, right? For like the kids and all that stuff. Like, I'm you know what I'm saying? Up and I don't know. Come on, I just took you on yeah, vacation. You shouldn't have went through my phone. Why did you go through my phone, though? 7 p.m. Friday, 95 degrees. But why did you go through my phone in the first place, though? You shouldn't have went through my phone. Day? But why did you go through my phone? Because why you have it open? Man, come on, man. That, so it's my fault. It but it's your fault. Ain't it like more of your fault Why for going through my phone, open? though? Well, yes, it is. You so you just gonna leave it? I, I ain't even, we ain't even finished with the cabin or nothing. You just gonna leave the vacation no, just because you find something in my phone? So you just gonna leave the, so you just gonna leave the vacation because you found something in my phone? Come on, for real, nigga. This, you serious? Listen. Man, come on, man. Boo, come on out the car for real now. You come on out the car, what? You gonna finish the vacation? Like, we still got two more days. I still got a cabin for two more days. You shouldn't have went through my phone. Well, you shouldn't have had it open. So you leaving? You shouldn't have had no bullshit in your phone. So, so you leaving? I'm out. How about that? Man, I see you. So you leaving? I'm out. Man, y'all see? What, what the f Come on, man. You dead said you're just going to leave for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy that, she, number one, she has her own. That's why I keep stressing on that. When you don't have your own... <laughs> you have to sit there and wait for him for the next two days imagine having to go through that deal with his bs just him gaslighting you and telling you why did you go through my phone as if it was your fault that he was cheating but he never accounts for the role that he is playing in the whole situation which is him cheating on her he's trying to manipulate the whole situation to make it seem like she is the bad person for going through his phone but i'm glad that she had her own car and she was able to sit in her car and drive away because there's no need for it there's no need for the back and forth you just up and you leave and if you don't have a car you better have some money all right have some money so that when anything happens you can bounce all right so let's get into the next story this is what TikTok didn't see after I found out he was cheating on me. I sold the whole house while he was at work and had it moved while he was gone. When he came home, <laughs> he was lost, but I was nowhere to be found. I had changed my phone number and went no contact up until this day. He didn't want his home and he didn't like his family. And he forgot to tell me, y'all. So I forgot to tell him that while I knew he was cheating, I built a new house. And he couldn't live in it. My deceased grandmother came to me in a dream and showed me that my husband was cheating. I remember my husband was about to leave the house. So this particular night, I was extremely sleepy and I hadn't got much rest. I remember my husband was about to leave the house. And for some reason, I was overwhelmed with thankfulness saying that I love him. I love him. I love him. So I told him, I love you so much. Something about saying I love you so much always did something in the relationships that I've had with men. When I say I love you so much, within 24 hours, there's something that I find out about the man that will stop me from loving him so much. I said, I love you so much. And he responded back, I love you too. In the dream, I was walking up the steps of the house that I grew up in. I grew up with my grandmother. I knew I was in a familiar place, but I also knew that I had stepped into a past place and it was scary. In this dream, when I made it in the house, she, shh, be quiet, be quiet, daughter, be quiet. I knew it was her voice, but I couldn't see her. So she walked me to the back in the room that I grew up in. And I stood there and I looked around and in the dream, I was wondering why was I there? But then I heard his ex's voice. And I heard him laugh. He walked into the living room and she was on the floor performing. She was on her hands and knees. She was twerking and bouncing and sliding up and down the floor. I was standing right over her and she didn't see me. It was like I was a spirit. I looked up and I saw him. He was smiling and talking about how good she looked. And yeah, baby. Yeah, like that, like that. She was laughing and she was saying, you like this? I can see my grandmother appear. My grandmother said, I love you so much. 
And that was the same exact thing that I had told him before he left the house that night. I trusted that I was the only woman in his life and the only one that he would love for life. But it was a lie. And my grandmother had me stand there and watch. And she just kept saying, not a watch. I continued to watch him and his ex. She got on her knees, unzipped his pants. She said to him, do your woman do it like this? And he smiled and he chuckled. And his chest poked out. With arrogance, he continued to allow her to please him. And I watched. And my grandmother continued to say, Nada, I love you so much. He held her up against the wall right there in front of me. My heart was racing. I could then feel my grandmother wrapping her arms around me, even though I could only see her silhouette. And she held me and she said it one more time. She said, Nada, I love you so much. I woke up from the dream. Two days later, I questioned him. He began to stutter and fluster over his words. After first, he remained quiet for a while. I said, when was the last time you saw your ex? And he was like, nah, 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 none of that's going on. None of that's going on. Truth was, all of that was going on. I then told him, when we got in this relationship, I asked you, were you done? And you advised me that you were. You said that there was nothing back there for you. Anything in your past was already gone and you would not return to your vomit. But yet, I feel like you may have. So what I'm saying to you is any game that you play, you will always be exposed because I prayed. Before I moved on into another relationship that all of the things that happened in the past would not repeat themselves. Especially without me knowing. And when I knew I would have the strength to walk away from what was old. One thing about spirits is they travel. And another thing about a spirit is they are familiar. So come to find out, he was cheating with his ex. Not only had he cheated with his ex, but he had also made a baby with her. I had this dream on the weekend and I went to work on Monday morning. He worked nights. I had talked to him before I clocked in to work that day. And he said that he was about to go to sleep. We lived on the other side of town, about an hour away. There was something that happened and quickened in me while I was working that day. I could not rest. Something kept telling me to go and wash my car. There was a car wash about 14 minutes away from my job. I didn't understand it. Usually, I did not take lunch breaks. For some reason, this particular day, I could not rest. I did need to wash my car, and it had been a week or so that I had put it off because of rain, but I was obedient. I got up. I locked the computer. After clocking out, and I drove to that car wash. When I was pulling up to the car wash, I looked at the parking lot next to it, which was a piece of place, and there was my husband's car. I didn't know him to be in that area previously for any reason, and for him to be in the piece of parking lot that he was in was very strange. Nervousness immediately began to overtake me. My heart was racing. I stared at the car, but no one was in there. So I thought maybe he was in the pizza place, but he wasn't. My emotions were on high. I sat in the car for a few minutes so that I can calm down. I pulled out from the vacuum space and I drove into the parking lot, the pizza parking lot, to see if he would come out of the door. But he didn't come out of the door and I looked through the parking lot. There was a Jeep parked right next to his car. He was in the passenger side and she was on the driver's side. He looked to his right and saw me. And it looked like he had seen a ghost. At this time, I had never seen his ex. I had simply heard her voice because she found my number and called me one day. He wind the window down and immediately said, that's my cousin. And said, get out of the car. Get out. The only thing that I said to him was, I'll always know. The next morning, I woke up to an inbox message on Facebook. It was his ex. The inbox message on Facebook read, I need your address because apparently his mama is playing games with me. His mama was supposed to give me your address so that he can be served with paternity test request papers along with child support. I was his sneaky link for far too long, I guess. I just had a baby in November. I've been quiet long enough. You walking around thinking somebody want him. Nobody want him. He cheated on you your entire engagement. I don't want him. He good for nothing. Silence is golden. I didn't respond to her and it drove her crazy. So suddenly I started getting messages under my videos from fake pages. Ma'am, I didn't help you locate him to sneaky link with him. I'm not helping you to locate him to serve no papers. 
Lo and behold, about two weeks later, I heard a knock on the door. He was at work. It was the police serving papers. Guess who gave her my address? You got it. It was his mama. At that time, we were living in a mobile home that I had paid off prior to us getting married. So I owned it. It was 100% in my name. I had been trying to sell that mobile home after the 100-year flood caused me to have to move to a parish that I did not want to be in. Ironically, that same week, I got a message from a lady that said that she had the cash money and she wanted to purchase the mobile home on the spot. We scheduled a time and date with the movers to have the mobile home moved. And while he was at work, I moved the whole house. <laughs> oh my God, this made me so happy. This made my day. The fact that she was able to sell that house and was building her own house while she found out that he was doing all those things. Oh, I'm so glad. This makes my heart swell. This is the outcome I want for most women who are in very bad relationships, okay? That we live with something. We live with our dignity, with our pride, with some joy. Because at the end of the day, we were the ones that went through the shit. Okay, we were the ones that faces were rubbed in the mud. So I'm so happy for her that she got the last laugh. All right. Always have a plan A, plan B, plan C to plan Z. Because if you don't do that, the <laughs> saddest situation is when you are going through a lot of shit in your relationship and you have no way out because you don't have your own. Because he has the upper hand, he has everything and you have nothing. That is the saddest situation to be in because now, how do you leave? How do you stand on your own two feet? So I'll always preach this, have your own in case of this. If something like this happens, you can up and leave. All right. Next story. I overheard my fiance calling me a trust fund Barbie while talking to his friend. So I got his life in shambles the next day. To preface, my family owns a very well-known business in our sector and makes a lot of profit. Thus, I am a trust fund baby. I try not to be spoiled and have always worked myself. I met my fiancé, Mark, when I was 20 and worked as a waitress. We began dating a few months later, and he proposed to me last year. Now, Mark is not poor. He is upper middle class, and while he doesn't struggle in life, he doesn't have too much to spend and lives very frugal. I thought he was an honest man because he always wanted to pay for his things, rejected expensive family holidays when we were still dating, and would cook for me instead of going with me to eat outside. What I want to say is that I never had the impression that Mark was trying to take advantage of me or my family. Initially, my family was sketched out, and the gold digger argument was brought up. I stood up for him and fought with my dad. They came to love and accept him. When Mark graduated, dad hired him, and now he is in a hiring position. Sunday, I was supposed to work in the evening, and I was going to stay with my sister. But I got a fever and was just non-functioning, so I stayed home. Instead of staying in our bedroom, I went to the better ventilated guest room. Mark came home when I was fast asleep and awakened by loud voices in our garden. I pushed the curtains to the side, and Mark was there with a few friends. I noticed they were talking about me just as I wanted to say hello. His friend kept laughing and calling Mark the man. Then they started laughing about me being willing not to sign a prenup. Then one of the girls there said something like, Jesus, you're about to make some bank Mark. Mark laughed, saying, yeah, just three more years, and I am free. At this moment, I felt sick to my stomach and wanted to throw up. I kept hearing them calling me trust fund Barbie and stupid and so on. I didn't know what to do, so I just lay petrified in my bed and waited till the people left and Mark went to bed. I texted my sister and snuck out to her place in the middle of the night and just passed out without telling her anything. I haven't returned home, so I told Mark I was sick and didn't want to make him sick. My sister has been worried, but I feel so ashamed about everything. My family was right. Mark was a go for it. Even if I tell my family what happened, I have no proof. As far as I know, he is excellent at what he does, and I think he has no legal foot to fire him. I just feel confused, ashamed, and angry. Update, I was very tempted to play the long game and lead him on, but I decided just to present him with a prenup to look into his reaction. After telling my dad, we invited Mark for lunch and would serve him the prenup there. However, to be sure about things, I asked him if he had had anyone over because our neighbors had complained about loud noises. He said yes, that his buddies were there. He didn't mention the girls that I saw. We finished lunch, and dad served him the papers, saying it was necessary for getting married. You could instantly see that he didn't expect this. He got angry and asked me to speak to him alone. We entered the other room, and he began babbling about blindsiding him. He said that this just really felt like a personal attack. He was trying so hard to sell me the role of victim and making me out to be the villain. Then he just said that he needed to think everything through and left. I must admit I broke down and began second guessing myself, but I could keep it together. My family happily didn't pull the I told you so s. We looked into everything, and I have the legal right to evict him. The lawyer handled everything, wrote an official eviction notice. After a lot of talk, Dad decided to present Mark with a deal so that he would leave the company. After that was all sorted out, I simply texted. Hey Mark, 
Trust Fund Barbie here. As you said you would be free in three years, I'll do you a big favor and set you free now. Kisses. After I sent that, my phone completely blew up with Mark's messages. He texted and called me so often that I had to switch off my phone. He came to my sister's place as he wanted to explain the situation. He promised that it was just a joke a million times. I said it wasn't cutting it. They disrespected me in my own house, and I didn't want to be with someone who put me down to appear better. He pleaded and cried. He begged me not to end things. When I wasn't budging he got mad at me accusing me of spying on him and ruining his life. Then his manner changed once again to apologetic. He eventually owned up to the comment he made, still insisting that it was just an awful joke. I stood strong and I ended things with him. I will never know what exactly his plan was, but it's better to have things this way. We still have to sort out some financial stuff but after that, I won't ever see Mark again. Well, you called me a trust fund baby. I'll show you that I'm a trust fund baby. All right. So he was going to marry her um, and then wait for three years, get a divorce and get a huge amount of, I don't know, money or something. You see them the opportunists that I keep talking about. This is the mindset of a lot of men. Most of them do not have access to trust fund babies. Okay. So what they do is they come for the regular women, the women who have the jobs, who have the houses, maybe a single mothers. Most of them want to put babies in you to baby trap you. Some of them want to have access to you for your body and the pleasure that you give them. Some of them want uh, women who will cook and clean for them. Some of them just want placeholders until they can stand on their own two feet. Some of them want to use your car like yesterday and sleep in your house and play video games the whole day. So be alert. Relationships and marriages are not the end or be all to life. There's so many things you can do with your own life. You need to start thinking about how to live life and enjoy life on your own and come to into like acceptance of the fact that this could be your life so if no man comes into your life how do you live your life if you don't have any man or if you don't ever get married how do you live your life and start living for you that's all i'm going to say but leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section protect your wombs be very selective of the people that you allow into your life and if you find yourself in a relationship always have a plan a to Z in case anything happens. And don't forget to sign them prenups. Okay. If you are from wealth, don't trust them. Let this be a cautionary tale. Do not trust them. What if that woman never heard what they had to say about her? Think about that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again with another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye.